everybody, it's Sanir, Engineer, MBA, and Investor. And in today's video, I want to talk about Ginkgo Bioworks Future Stock Symbol DNA. I want to talk about this company. I've already covered this company in the past. I will link those previous videos in this video. But just know that I, I did dive deep into that company in previous weeks in different videos. So if you're curious about diving deep into the company, what they do, where they come from, and where they plan on going, do watch those videos. Now, before we even talk about today's video, do like this video, smash that like button, destroy that like button, guys, really helps this channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please, please, please consider subscribing and then hit that notification bell if you haven't. So DNA, obviously right now it's still not official because it is not yet a public company. So Ginkgo Bioworks, it was planning and is still planning to go through a merger through what we call a SPAC deal. And this is currently with the SRNG stock symbol. And right now it is not still in the public market. So don't try to buy the company right now. You cannot do it. DNA, you can still buy the SRNG but it is still not merged officially as we speak. But just know that they are planning to go it through in the following weeks, could be potentially in the upcoming two, three weeks really. And this we sort of expected from the comments from the CEO back in July where they were planning in Q3, um, in, basically in the following months of this year. So Viral Analytics here, the, um, this gentleman here posted a few threads here on Twitter and I think it'll be very, very useful for us to sort of go through some of those threads just to get some latest uh, action with the company, what the people around uh, the space are saying and maybe give our thoughts here as to what we should be expecting from this company. So first of all, they are valued to go public at a valuation of almost $18 billion, okay? So this is not... Uh, a low amount, $18 billion is a lot when we talk about biotech companies, especially with a biotech company this early. But just know that, you know, does it really, the, the, the big question is, does it really matter considering where this company is trying to go, right? What the, the CEO has mentioned in our previous video, we covered that. Does it really matter? And that's the big question mark, right? That's where you as an investor, you have to build your own risk tolerance. You have to make your own informed decision. We never provide financial advice. So please do your own research as always. So over here, Chamat here, I will, I will not play the video because of the sake of uh, copyright here. I don't want to get hit with a copyright flag here from YouTube, but just know that Chamar and the all-in groups like Jason Cham Chamar uh, and uh, David Freebird uh, and Fred, and they uh, they talk a lot about biotech companies. And in this clip here, they're talking about specifically what happened with Zymergen. We actually covered what happened a few weeks ago with that company, and we actually made a mention of that podcast episode. But here, Chamar actually made a comment on Geico Bioworks. He said... Uh, is not relevant metric under organism is product it and then this person here uh viral analytics he mentions that it sells ip to customers in form of custom uh, invisible microbes in plastic container costs zero dollar to grow right has a refute argument against shamat's uh, negative comment on ginkgo bioworks and then basically you know after following pretty much every Ginkgo PR past eight, eight years, um, it wasn't like it, it's Ginkgo Pio. So basically, you know, the, the idea here is that you have a company here that has a track record of really staying on the mission, right? And then you have these gentlemen such as Chamat, which obviously is a billionaire and his group of friends, there are sort of like really raising the flag on any company that really promises any sort of things that what, for example, Ginkgo Bioworks are, are promising. And they may be right. I mean, you know, ultimately, these guys have a lot of experience and these guys have seen a lot. But the, the thing here that I, I sort of agree with Vara Analytics here is that they sort of bash down on, on um, 
on Ginkgo Bioworks and sort of using Zymergen's experience. And, I, and I'm not sure if they say it in this episode, but they do mention Theranos a lot. And I think they just got a bad taste from the whole Theranos experience that now every single company in the biotech space, genomic space, even genome editing slash CRISPR sort of gets that, 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 that bad stain on it, right? Because of those past experiences. And I think that's unfair. I, true, I strongly agree with, with Vara Analytics here. I think this company, DNA, you know, Ginkgo Bioworks is for real. I think they've uh, mentioned a couple of times the episodes I've listened to, their CEO, you know, everything to me sounds like they're really trying to build an ecosystem where they can leverage their technology to help different manufacturers, different verticals, whether that's in cannabis, which they are involved right now with Kronos, or with different, you know, material sciences, plastics, like we just mentioned, different material sciences here. And I think, I think there's definitely, definitely something here to be, to be made, right? There's definitely a company here that can several, if it can improve your manufacturing, increase your efficiencies, decrease costs, then ultimately every single manufacturer here will want their hands on some sort of technology that Ginkgo Bioworks can leverage. And what's really interesting with Ginkgo Bioworks is they make deals through licensing technology, obviously, and through obviously the standard deals, but they also make deals with equity, right? And Ginkgo Bioworks do own equity of Kronos, the cannabis company. And I think that's just amazing, right? I, I really love that mentality because that's not just a company with a pipeline, with a program, with technology, but also a company sort of building that platform, right? And I love how the CEO con- continuously talks about the app store, the software world where you have this Android, you know, Android ecosystem, Windows ecosystem on your PCs or App Store, iOS on your iPhones. I think it's just amazing. Uh, I love that parallel. Now, whether that will translate, you know, smoothly to that extent, obviously, you know, the Internet and the technology that we're used to is basically moving information to information, right? But in biotech, in biology, in synthetic biology, it's all about moving atoms to atoms. That's a physical change, right? That's that's no joke, you know, that's a huge, huge workload. That's a huge promise here. And again, the total address more markets could be much more than what, you know, and many, many experts say in today's era, right? So, and 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 a really nice here uh, theory here is that, you know, Chamad is obviously is known to be a super successful uh, venture capitalist. And because he didn't get the SPAC deal with DNA, Gecko Bioworks, you know, he's trying to get everything to, you know, to trash down on you know, on Ginkgo Bioworks just because maybe he may be sour. Again, that's just speculation. I won't read too much into that, but uh, definitely is interesting. A couple of other thread threads here is that, you know, the, the gentleman here is saying that, you know, because there's this company, you know, Abcelera Biologics, you know, they bought them around $5 billion market caps. Uh, DNA is sort of worth multiples of that, right? If this company is worth $5 billion, then Ginkgo Bioworks should be worth multiple of that just because of the sheer markets that Ginkgo Bioworks are involved in, the technology they're involved in. Um, obviously, I, I've always said, you know, if it goes in around 10 billion market caps or below, I think you would call it a lot more attention of investors. But at current valuation of 18 billion, I think a lot of people, especially people that are involved with CRISPR companies, you know, they're looking at that and they're like, damn, like these less companies like KU Biosciences that are also some sort of platform and building that type of a, a mentality, obviously different businesses, obviously different business models, so obviously different technologies, not even involved in the same in the same realm of technology, although they're both biotech companies, Caribou Biosciences are not even worth $2 billion. And that's after doubling, right, in the past month. So you're looking at that evaluation, it's scaring people off. But the gentleman here, again, is is, is mentioning that, you know, regardless of what Chamat is saying, regardless of what uh, the public is saying, there is potential in this company. Just a sheer fact of if you compare with, with other companies that are sort of similar doing something similar but are worth still like you know a few billion dollars you know it, there is an argument to be made for, for big ginkgo bioworks now obviously we'll see that in the price action as they go public right as they de-spack as they mentioned uh 
Uh, we'll see what happens. You know, maybe, you know, they'll shoot down all the way down to 10 billion market. Or maybe that $18 billion, billion market cap was a steal, right? Maybe they'll just shoot up, right? Who knows? You know, we don't, we never know, guys. That's, anybody that tells you what they know, I think you should run very far away from them. And the last two thread here from for Ginkgo Bioworks is that uh, Morgan Stanley actually released a paper on this. This was on, um, on, um, on the 8th September of last week. And this, this, they, they sort of get, got in an excerpt from a YouTube script, right? And Morgan Stanley are involved with healthcare. They've been involved with biotech. I've seen some articles from them. I've seen them involved in the past. And again, it's all about the code base, right? It's all about leveraging the IP reuse, you know, the fact they have experience, right, right, in this field. And it is, there is an economies of scale, right? As you get more experience, as you get more data, as you get more customers, then you can sort of leverage out that technology and sort of build that portfolio. A, a great analogy was made is that, you know, why can't anybody just make another search engine to compete with Google, right? Google owns over 90% of internet searches. Why can anybody, even the big tech companies, right? And they've tried it. Some, some of them have tried it, like Bing from Microsoft. But why can't they compete with Google? It's because Google has so much data, right? They sort of perfected that indexing. And obviously there's a network effect. And then at that point, it just scales up, right? And again, this is exponential growth, yeah? You have to think exponentially, guys. When we think about revolutionary companies, revolutionary technologies, you have to think about exponential growth, right? And this is what I think Ginkgo Bioworks are betting on. And I think it's just amazing. Uh, there are some focus on high margin product that I didn't get to see. Let's read Let's read this really quickly here. Uh, so if you have a hero ingredients, there are high margin, high value new products that are driving innovation growth in that industry, right? So they're talking about different uh, industries here. So quite interesting in the food industry. And I know they are involved with several companies in the food industry. Impossible Foods was definitely something, a company they are involved with. I think it's amazing. We are moving in that future, right? Synthetic biology has the future in our uh, in our communities. Just the question becomes, you know, how far are we from that future? Are we close? What is the economies of scale looking like? What is the revenues business model? You know, margins. They're they're talking about high high margin here. They're talking about you know full ag agriculture, chemicals, obviously the pharma um, industry. So I, I think there's a lot to be made here. I know Ginkgo Bioworks are planning to sort of expand on the CRISPR uh, footprint. I think they want to be involved with CRISPR. Obviously, want to ride out over that CRISPR. Uh, wave that we're having right now for companies like NTLA, Beam Therapeutics, CRISPR Therapeutics, Kaibu Biosciences, and so on. So look out for that. I think what they're doing is amazing. Again, uh, I would definitely recommend you guys to look further into that. I think the, these threads here are amazing from this gentleman here, but there's other articles as well if you're curious. Um, there's like four parts of, of the company history here. Let's take a look. The government get grants early on, obviously, just like most startups, right? They get some grants from external sources, obviously, in this case, government grants, you know, 15 to 20, you get some no, you get some spin outs, right? Some core developments. And then 2021, you get bio biopharma to take flyers using proof points. Yeah, so very interesting. Lots of great, great points here made. Uh, discounts. I, I, I just... I, I, I won't spend too much time fixing on the price. I, I know a lot of you, you have your own opinion on it. Let me know what you think about this company. You know, let me know what you think about the market size. Let me know what uh, market cap size, right? The, as they plan on these packing going public. Again, it may be anytime soon. I haven't gotten a specific date yet, but it could be in the, within the next week, few weeks. I've had some of you comment on our channel, so making a video on Ginkgo Bioworks. Again, I did make a, two videos, separate videos on Ginkgo Bioworks, diving deep into the company, what they do. I looked at their presentation. Today's video was more to talk about the naysayers, more to talk about these threats from Barrow Analytics, sort of give our thoughts here and what we should be expecting, some comments about what industries they're involved in, what is their potential. 
I truly believe this could be a revolutionary company. I think they have an amazing leadership. I know there's an interview I'm looking for for start, from pounding the table, I think, that with the CEO from Ginkgo Bioworks. I'm looking forward to hear that. And I've heard the CEO speak on different podcast episodes, including including with Jason from Alls, uh, J- Jason Calcanis um, on his weekly startups uh, YouTube channel. So very, very curious to see what happens with this company. Let me know in the comments what you think. Like this video if you found value from it. Smash that like button, guys. Destroy that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. I will see you guys tomorrow on a beautiful Thursday, uh, Tuesday. Sorry, we are Monday starting the week. So let's hope for a great week, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And we will see each other tomorrow. Thank you for watching.